There is an aspect that has always surprised me about images produced with artificial intelligence, and is the composition. It seems that these images produced respect real rules of a photographic composition. Let's analyze this set of images selected from the Mid-Journey Gallery and let's see which compositional structures we are able to identify and possibly the correction we can hypothetically apply to improve these images. For this analysis I will proceed through three compositional layers which are the spatial description, the structures, and the distribution of density. By the way, if you are interested in this topic, if you are interested in composition and the application of these rules for the production of photorealistic renders, these topics are treated in depth in the Realistic Interiors Composition module. Composition influences the way images are observed and therefore the photorealism perceived. Here is a collage of images I've selected, so let's start immediately with the first layer, which is the spatial description. From the perspective lines, we can understand that the focal length chosen for this image is a medium-low focal length. Considering that the camera target points toward the corner of the room, this choice is correct because it allows to, to enhance the framed space, making it much more three-dimensional. In this case, by analyzing the perspective lines, we can understand that the focal length chosen is longer. Also in this case the camera is pointing towards the corner of the room, but we have this element in the foreground that creates a framing. So we have an object in foreground and the background where is the rest of the room. Therefore the choice of a long focal length is correct, since we have a framing element which structures the image. Also in this image we have a camera that points towards the corner of the room. The focal is long and we can deduce it from these almost parallel lines. In this case we don't have framing elements, so we should rather enhance the three-dimensionality of the space, as in the previous example. So a correction that I would certainly make to this image is to reduce the focal length to go more towards this other type of a representation. After the spatial description, let's now analyze the compositional structure. In the image number 4 we can identify the use of a medium focal length and the use of a central perspective as a compositional structure. As already mentioned in the introduction, there are some aspects of these images produced by AI that really amaze me, as in this case the use of symmetry. In this example, in fact, we observe that the symmetry works perfectly thanks to some objects that make it slightly imperfect. For example, these objects, this shower hose, also the light on the left, which is more intense, produces greater brightness on the left side and these small imperfections in the symmetrical images are the ones that actually make them more natural. The use of symmetry here is perfect in this kind of image. In image number 5 the aesthetic quality is really impressive. We can recognize the use of a long focal length thanks to the presence of the planes of representation. The framing is used as a compositional technique thanks to these two elements that frame the main subject. However, I have the feeling that in this image the two elements used for framing occupy a truly excessive space. Let's see how we can improve it. We can cut the image and make that the framing elements become a small part of the shot. But given the vertical nature of the image, the ideal would be to extend it towards up and down. But we don't have this information, so I use Dolly Artificial Intelligence, which is specific for this type of editing. And so I generated the missing parts. 
Here is the final result. We can say that the final version is much more effective. Let's now analyze this pair of images that are part of the same collection. We observe that the image on the right works better. In the image on the left we have too many points of interest, all of the same sites and this causes the hierarchy between the shapes is a bit weak. At the opposite, in the image on the right, we have a clear point of interest while everything else surrounds it. In this case, the hierarchy is much stronger and the composition works better. If we wanted to make a correction, we could move this chair outwards. I did it quickly in Photoshop, so it is cropped and shifted slightly to the right. As you can see in the latter version, the compositional structure is more effective. Let's move on to the next image, which has a truly incredible look. The use of a long focal length can be recognized by the fact that the columns are all roughly the same size and this makes the objects in foreground appear more important than a background. The background is also slightly blurred and therefore the compositional structure is very solid. In any case, observing how the objects are distributed, I thought I would analyze it with the golden ratio. The first thing that comes to mind is to add an object in this area that seems to be missing. The idea is to reinforce this type of composition, so I cut out the lamp in Photoshop and after some correction I placed it right here. In my opinion, this makes the image more complete and also generates a balance between these two parts, which makes the whole composition more solid. To complete our analysis, let's move on to the third layer, the analysis of the distribution of the density. At the first sight, image number 9 is without a doubt the one that gives the most solid compositional structure. In this case we can analyze the distribution of density and observe how in image 9 we have one large object surrounded by many small objects that increase the density of detail. In image 10 instead we have several large objects and a few small ones. This image does not have a clear hierarchy and does not generate a good shape contrast. That instead it is very evident in image number 9. This is the main reason why image number 9 certainly has a much stronger compositional structure. Let's complete our analysis with these two images with a decidedly pictorial style. In particular, we can observe how at first sight the image on the right appears with a better composition. In this case, I carried out the analysis by painting the areas with a high density of detail in yellow and the rest in blue. This is the analysis of the first image and here we have the second one. The density of distribution produces a balance between positive and negative spaces that guides the observer in structuring the image. This type of analysis is inspired by the theory of shapes known as Gestalt, developed during the Bauhaus, which then influenced the visual communication and the design that followed. Let's see the result of this analysis. It stands out that the image on the right is the one that has a much better organized relationship between high and low detail density and this makes the image number 12 appear much better structured and easily readable. I hope you enjoyed this analysis and if you are interested in learning composition, lighting and photorealism for the archivists, take a look to my Realistic Interiors course. Ciao ciao!